the Magic City. It's 1893 and the Chicago World's Fair opens its doors. Widely known as the Columbian Exposition, the 1893 World's Fair was a marvel of architecture, culture, and technology, all in one place. Today, we'll be taking a very close look at a book entitled The Magic City. It was published in 1894 by the Historical Publishing Company. It contains photographs of essentially every aspect of the 1893 Chicago World's Fair. This fair and its history leaves us with many questions. Questions mainly surrounding feasibility. Was it possible to build such an incredible achievement of architecture in such a short period of time? Were there enough skilled workers? How did they know how to, and so skillfully, build these incredible and unique architectural styles in that period? Skeptics argue that the buildings were simply built from plaster and designed to only be temporary. While this may be true for some of them, there are a vast amount of incredibly large buildings that were not. This page specifically states the manufacturer's building was built with 17 million feet of lumber, 12 million pounds of steel, 2 million pounds of iron, and over 500,000 feet of glass. Let's make sure we heard that properly. 12 million feet of lumber. Typically for your average home, we can construct them today with about 6 board feet of lumber per square foot. We are not making any claims or speculating on any conclusions but merely have a lot of questions about the absolute massiveness of this project. We must start our research by looking at the basic facts surrounding the Columbian Exposition. To start, let's look at Wikipedia and see some of the basic facts about the fair. The opening paragraph of the description reads, The World's Columbian Exposition, also known as the Chicago World's Fair, was a World's Fair held in Chicago in 1893 to celebrate the 400th anniversary of Christopher Columbus' arrival in the New World in 1492. The centerpiece of the fair held in Jackson Park was a large water pool representing the voyage Columbus took to the New World. Chicago had won the right to host the fair over several other cities, including New York City, Washington, D.C., and St. Louis. The exposition was an influential social and cultural event and had a profound effect on American architecture, the arts, American industrial optimism, and Chicago's image. To establish some basic facts about the fair, let's look at the numbers. How many buildings were built there? Wikipedia says nearly 200 new but deliberately temporary buildings were built. Keep that in mind. Deliberately temporary. Today, what organization, group, investor, or municipality would undergo such an unfathomable feat of attempting to build 200 temporary buildings? The cost was unfathomable and operated at a loss. What's also interesting is some of these photos have clearly been manipulated. Going back to our video about early photo manipulation and editing, this is clearly a photo that has been drawn into why would some of these photos be mixed with drawings? Is it possible that this is just an overexposure of some sort? It looks more like a drawing, but it is difficult to be certain. Keep in mind that this was the late 1800s. This wasn't the Renaissance. There wasn't an abundance of skilled artisans walking around that were not only skilled craftsmen, but also artists themselves. To successfully manage a large group of unskilled workers to complete such incredible detail in architecture would be a feat in itself, especially without any prior training. Let's take a look at the planning and organization section. Reading through the entire section, it seems to omit a couple pieces of pertinent information. First, how long did it take to build? It doesn't say. Next, who built all these buildings? It also doesn't mention the number of workers and types of artisans and skilled trades required to build these structures. It mentions the architects, the planning, and the financial dealings, but nothing about the actual construction of the fair. In order to find some more facts about the fair, such as how long it took to build and how many people, we must look elsewhere. We will be able to find this information on the Encyclopedia Britannica website under the biography of Daniel Burnham, the American architect. 
The encyclopedia quotes, In little more than two years, working with America's most noted architects and designers, Burnham developed America's most spectacular World's Fair of the 19th century. He led a workforce that reached 10,000 men. So, we know a few more facts now. We know there were over 200 buildings built. Let's just use 200 as the total number for the rest of this video. We know it took just over two years to construct. We also know that at its peak, the workforce encompassed 10,000 men. Unfortunately, it is difficult to find anything else about who these men were and how they acquired the skills required to build all these buildings. Nevertheless, there was 10,000 men at the peak of construction. This also implies that there may have been less at other times. 10,000 was the most they had at a given time. So, this could perhaps imply that there could have been 5, 6, 7, or 8,000 at other times. We will still use the highest number for some rudimentary calculations. If there was 10,000 men, that built 200 buildings in two years. This means that about 50 men worked on each of those buildings on average, if we want to split that up equally. Let's take a look at the most common construction tools in the 1890s. Keep in mind, power tools were not invented until 1895 and took some time to become widely used. Only hand tools were available at the time and more than likely used by the common construction worker. Let's fast forward to the modern day for a minute. Some basic questions that come to mind, considering this feat was almost a century and a half ago, is how does it compare to today's standards? How long does it take for an architect to draw up plans for a commercial building today? According to multiple architecture-related websites, the average number we see the most is about four months. Today, it takes an architect potentially up to four months to draw and design a standard commercial building. A basic residential home may take less but could also take a month or two. We don't know the total number of architects that worked on the fair, but it would had to have been many. Next question that comes to mind is how many laborers does it take to build a standard house? According to Plumber's Disposal, it can take anywhere between 26 to 32 different workers to simply build a residential home today. Most people know that a home can take from anywhere between six months to two years to build. This includes landscapers, excavators, framers, masons, wall installers, cleaners, carpenters, floor installers, roofers, and more. Let that sink in for a second. 26 to 32 workers is typical over the course of a single residential home construction project over a time of six months to two years. Today, we have heavy machinery excavators, concrete forms, power tools, pre-cut and milled lumber, and electricity on the job site. Rewind back to 1893. Almost a century and a half ago, there were no power tools, there were no massive excavators. There was a low supply of extremely highly skilled artisan construction workers. Most people built and lived in cabins like this unless you lived in a city. Life was short, difficult, and construction was basic at best. Literally a roof over your head to survive each season as they come. Meanwhile, at the World's Fair, some 10,000 odd construction workers built some of the most marvelous and intricate architecture ever seen. How this marvelous feat of architecture was accomplished is nothing short of a miracle. Is there more to the story that we don't know? Was there other tools and technology in use that we may not know of? One thing we know for sure is it was a marvelous accomplishment one way or another.